And looking at some of the major themes of Proverbs, and really, though, our series is about making wise decisions, right? Because when we make wise decisions, things go better for us in all areas of our life, financially, relationally, or health-wise. And we've talked about a few main themes that are in the Proverbs that talk about these. The first, the fear of the Lord. We've talked about that. It's not being afraid of God. It's, it's a heart attitude, understanding who we are in relation to God, and, and ultimately that we are not God and that God is God. So we talked about the foolish, avoiding foolish people because they will eventually bring you down with them. And again, uh, we talked about the fact that in the Proverbs, when they talk about the fool or the foolish, Sometimes it's a, what we consider a foolish person, but usually it's referring to someone who does not have the fear of the Lord, someone who does not acknowledge God, someone who is not trying to live their life the way God wants them to, the wicked. So Proverbs calls that person a fool. Uh, we talked about uh, the sluggard, right, which is a fun word to say because we don't use that very much, but it really means the lazy, lazy people that they don't like to work and usually they don't have enough for what they need, so they tend to borrow money and to uh, rack up a lot of debt um, and the warning uh, against us for not being a sluggard. We talked about money, that everyone should have a budget and live by it, that you should spend less than you make, that you should be savings, and that you should not go into debt for unnecessary things. So you, know, you do need a place to live. You do need transportation. Education is good, but not buying a house bigger than you can afford or an expensive car out of your price range. Uh, not living beyond your means, right? Okay, uh, we talked about wise words uh, and that we can make a decision in the words we use. We can use them to tear other people down and to speak death into our relationships, or we can use our word to build other people up and to speak life into our relationships. And ultimately, we saw last week uh, or two weeks ago that God is going to hold us accountable for our words. So as Christians, as wise people, we need to choose our words wisely. Um, and then we talked about last week about wise relationships and that the, the people we surround ourselves with influence us. And so we need to be careful in choosing who our close friends are, the people that we spend our most time with, because whether we want them to or not, they're going to influence us. And we're influencing those around us. So we need to make sure that we are following God's laws, following Jesus' teachings, being our best self so we can influence the people around us for good. But there's a difference between hearing these Proverbs and hearing these words and actually making wise decisions, right? Just because you hear them, because you have the head knowledge, doesn't mean that you are going to make wise decisions. The, the important part is the doing of it, right? It's the doing. So putting this advice, putting these wisdom from these Proverbs into practice in our life, that is the important part. So today we're going to close this series uh, by uh, looking, uh, I'm going to go through uh, some five questions to help you determine your next step. Or if you're about to make a decision, especially an important decision, five questions you should ask yourself. And I've taken these from a book by Dr. Uh, Dr. Andy Stanley called Better Decisions and Fewer Regrets. And here's two, just before we start out, these aren't uh, in the book, but there's two decision filters that every Christian should use when making significant decisions. And I would even say for insignificant decisions as well. Uh, it is going to scripture and prayer. So, right, a lot of the things that we think about in daily decisions are not actually in the Bible. If you go to the Bible, it's not going to tell you what you should eat for breakfast, right? But, well, unless you're following the Old Testament Jewish dietary laws, then it, it would be in there. But as Christians, we don't follow those. We're not, we don't have to. And there was an important time and place for them, and they were good in the time, but they don't really apply to us today. So, but, you, you know, if you're, you don't need the Bible for every decision, right? If you're diabetic, you don't need to go look in the scriptures to see if you should have a big stack of pancakes with, you know, sugary syrup poured all over it, right? You don't have to do that. Or if you should be having chocolate cake for dessert every day, right? You don't need to look in the Bible to see if it says, should I have chocolate cake if I'm diabetic? Okay, I'm way out of my notes here. All right, so, but... 
some decisions are in the Bible and scripture has addressed them. Jesus talked about them, right? So we can look to scripture to see if the decision we need to make, if uh, there's wisdom in there for us. The other is prayer. And I'm not just talking about saying a quick prayer, God, should I do this? Oh, I didn't hear anything. I better just, right? I'm talking about spending time in prayer. Prayer is a gift that God has given us. We, as his children, can go to him in prayer and know that he hears us, know that he cares about us. And when we take time to pause, to actually take time to be in prayer, God often will speak to us and we will be able to hear him. Sometimes he speaks to other people. Sometimes he speaks directly to us. My great-grandmother always used to say, whenever I have an idea that's smarter than me, I know that's God talking to me. So I always thought that was kind of cute. Well, here's... Uh, in addition to prayer and looking in the scriptures, here are five questions that if you answer them honestly to yourself, they will help you in your decision making. They will help you avoid selling yourself on a bad idea or making a quick decision when time is short. These questions will help you improve your relationships and heal division through making better, wiser decisions. These questions will help you discover the reasons behind your decisions so that you can move forward with positive decisions and changes. They will help you consider the long-term impact of your choices so you can write a life story worth celebrating. And if you take time to ask yourself these five questions when making an important decision, they can help you identify red flags uh, that signal which decisions may result in future regrets. So, here they are, the five questions. First is the integrity question. Am I being honest with myself? The second is the legacy question. What story do you want to tell in the future about the decision you're making today? The third is the conscious question. Is there a tension in your conscious that deserves your attention? The fourth is the maturity question, or what is the wise thing to do? What's the mature thing to do, the wise thing? And then the fifth question is the relationship question. What does love require of me in this decision? So, your decisions, what you do, are about the only thing you can really control in your life, right? You can't control other people even though we would like to. You can't control a lot of your circumstances. Some you can by making wise decision and making your circumstances better, but there's so many things that you can't control, but you can control the decisions that you make. So answering these five questions for yourself can help you make the best decisions, which will give you the best results. All right, the first question, we're just gonna go through these. It's the integrity question. Am I being honest with myself, right? Our decisions are often heavily influenced by our emotions and our appetites. And research suggests that we aren't able to really make decisions apart from our emotions. And experience confirms that our appetites oftentimes overrule our intellect, our intelligence, excuse me. So if you realize you're selling yourself on something, trying to convince yourself, you should pause. You should stop for a minute and pause and think. Here's why. You rarely have to sell yourself on a good idea, right? If something is just right and you know it, you don't have to sell yourself. But isn't it true that sometimes we kind of convince ourselves to make a decision that I mean, ultimately we know this isn't really a wise decision, but we talk ourselves into it. We, we try to convince ourselves. When it comes to good decision making, we face our greatest challenge every morning in the mirror because you can't make a wise decision when you're lying to yourself. So tell yourself the truth, even though if you feel bad about yourself or you don't want the answer that you're hearing, you owe it to yourself and you owe it to others, especially if you have a family, to, to be honest with yourself. Why am I really wanting to do this? Why am I really wanting to buy this? Why am I really going to do what I'm about to do? Be honest with yourself. And if you don't like the answer, well, maybe, maybe you need to make a different decision. 
And if you find that you're trying to sell yourself on an idea, stop and ask yourself, why are you working so hard to convince yourself to do this? All right. Uh, Second question uh, you should ask yourself is the legacy question. What story do I want to tell? Every decision that you make, especially the big ones, become a permanent part of your life story, the story of your life. Every decision has an outcome, some good outcome, some bad outcome, uh, but every decision you make does have an outcome. Maybe desirable, maybe undesirable. Maybe expected, maybe an unexpected outcome. Whatever the case, that outcome will be a permanent part of the story of your life. So when making a decision, especially certain decisions, ask yourself, what is the story that I want to be able to tell later about the decision that I made today? What do I want to be able to tell my children? What do I want to be able to tell my grandchildren when they ask me about this? Right? Think about the legacy that you're going to leave. Now, you can lie to them. They'll probably never know. Do you want to have to do that? Right? And also, think about this too. Later on, your legacy, uh, you know, we're in Jefferson City. It's kind of, people kind of move and go, but many of you have been here. We've known each other for years. Not when I say we, you've known each other for years. What about the people around you and your family or your friends that are going to know or find out about the decision you're thinking about making? Five years from now, 10 years from now, How do you want them to see you? How do you want them to treat you? All right. The third question is, I'm not even in my notes anymore. Here we go. The third filter we should use when making a decision is this, the conscious question. Is there a tension that deserves your attention? You all have experienced this, right? We all have. You're, you're, you're making a decision. There's something that just doesn't feel right. You're not sure what it is. You can't really identify it, but just somehow there's this tension there, right? And I, I, I don't know the side. In those moments when that happens, unless you have to make a decision right away, if you feel a tension, it's best once again to, to pause, to stop, and to think about it. Address the tension. Right? Flesh it out. Figure out what is going on and what's causing that tension. Experts sometimes refer to this phenomenon as a red flag moment. It's an internal sense of, I'm not sure why, but something just doesn't quite feel right. And when this happens, you owe it to yourself to take time to pause to pray, to try to identify what is it that doesn't feel right. Try to identify it, right? So um, you don't prioritize your emotion in that moment uh, over the facts, but your emotions are a part of the decision-making process. It's almost the other side of what we talked about just a minute ago. If that emotion is giving you a a, a sense to pause, a, a little tension, It's worth at least investigating and seeing what that tension is. So pay attention to the tension. Because what is an uneasy feeling often, as we know, is supported later by a reason and new information that comes to light uh, or an insight where your conscious kind of knew something but you couldn't place it, right? So it's worth it to pause. By the way, there's a theme here with all these. It's pause. It's what's the same fools rush in, right? When you're making a decision, pause, take time to think about it, pray about it. Um, Okay, the fourth question you should ask yourself when making a hard decision is the maturity question. What is the wise thing to do? Sometimes we know what the wise thing to do is, we just don't wanna do it, right? We wanna do something else, we want what we want, but we know what the wise thing is. Sometimes we need to seek wise counsel, right? But knowing everything that you know, how she feels about it, how much it really costs, what would the wise thing be? Okay, so speaking of cost, right? uh, There's three costs that all men pay for things, right? There's the price that they really pay. There's the price they tell their wife that they paid for it. And then there's the price you pay when your wife finds out how much you really pay, right? So three prices uh, for each thing. So notice the question here is not, is this the wrong thing to do? 
That's not the question you ask yourself. See, the problem is, in trying to sell ourselves on a decision, we can know deep down that this isn't a wise decision, and we start to tell ourselves some half-truths, right? If it's not wrong, then it's all right. If it's not illegal, then it's permissible. If it's not immoral, then it's acceptable. If it's not over the line, then it's fine, right? We tell ourselves these things to try to convince ourselves that this is a good decision, when all the while we know it's not. And while technically uh, those statements may be true, they don't always lead us to making a wise decision. Because instead of asking ourselves what the wise decision is, before long, we're asking, well, how close can I get to this line before I go over it? How close can I get to the edge of that cliff before I accidentally fall off it? By the way, it's not an accident. If you're edging closer and closer to that line, closer to that cliff, it's not an accident that you crossed that line or fell over it. You know it's not. So ask yourselves these questions. Don't ask how unethical, immoral, or insensitive can I be without creating unmanageable outcomes for myself? How long can I neglect my family or my finances or my health without feeling the effects, right? Don't ask yourself that. Instead, what is the wise thing to do? And here's why. Because making the wise decision, even though it's not always the fun decision, it's not always the easiest decision in that moment, but you know this. Making a wise decision now always leads to fewer regrets later. It always leads to fewer regrets later. Okay. The purpose of the fourth question isn't to stop you from doing something wrong. It's to keep you from doing something unwise. So the real question is, what's the wise thing to do? All right. The fifth and the last question is the relationship question, which is what does love require of me? This is a question you must ask yourself if the decision you make either includes someone else, maybe your spouse, your children, your, your family, maybe a coworker at work, or they will be affected by your decision, either now or if they find out later that you made this decision, right? So the question you need to ask is, what does love require of me in this moment? The last night that Jesus was with his disciples before he gave himself up and died on the cross for your sins and for mine, the last night he was with them, he said this, a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Until then, the golden rule had been the standard, right? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Treat others the way you want to be treated. And that's still, I mean, that's still a pretty good standard. But for Christians, for Christ followers, that's not the standard by which we make our decisions. At least we're not supposed to. It shouldn't be, how do you want them to treat you? It should be, how did Jesus Christ treat you? What did God do on your behalf through his son, Jesus Christ? Jesus said, a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all men will know you are my disciples if you love one another. And then, a little while later in the conversation, he said this, if you love me, you will obey what I command. Let me ask you this. Do you love Jesus? Do you love Jesus? I do too. Well, here's what Jesus says. There's a way to know if you really love him. There's a way to know if you really, truly do love him. Because anybody can say it, right? Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey what I command. If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. That's God's Holy Spirit living inside you. He who does not love me will not obey my teaching. So, only you can answer this question. Actually, I want to say that, but that's not really true. I think the people that live with you, the people that work with you, the people that interact with you, they know if you really love Jesus or not. They can see hear by your words, see by your actions, if you really are obeying Jesus' commands and his teachings. So according to Jesus, if you really do love him, you will obey his command. And if you do not obey his teachings, 
to love others as Christ loved you, do you really love Jesus or you just like the idea of Jesus loving you? In your relationships, all of them, you need to ask yourself this question. What does love require of me in this moment? And these five questions are more than a decision-making filter. These questions will steer you in the direction of God's general will for your life. And they will position you to be able to discern or recognize His personal will for your life as well. Good questions that you ask yourself and answer honestly, good questions will lead to better decisions. And your decisions determine the direction and quality of your life. And your decisions serve as the framework for the story of your life. And while there's nothing you can do about decisions you've made in the past already, even, like you, even if you'd like to go back and undo them, there is something you can do about the decisions you make today and in the future. While your regrets are a part of your story, they're only a part of your story. They don't have to define who you are and who you're going to be in the future. And they don't have to be the rest of your story. So when making decisions, if the answer is not clear in the Bible, and if you don't have a clear prayer sense about it, ask yourself these five questions and live a better life with fewer regrets. Please pray with me. Father, we all want that. We all want to live a better life with fewer regrets. We all want to make wise decisions financially, relationally, health-wise. God, would you please, would you please give us wisdom through your Holy Spirit as we read your word, as we come to you in prayer, as we stop and ask ourselves honest questions to try to identify our motives behind our decisions, would you please give us the strength through the power of your Holy Spirit to make wise decisions in our life? We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.